ready to learn some more funk? F O U W N K E E E. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So, we've learned some cool devices, and uh, the next step in the progression is another little thing that I enjoy doing. Uh, we're gonna keep it in the in the key of C right now. So if I said, you know, it's a C7, right? Remember how I talked about earlier that that can mean C9, C13, little tricks, single note stuff. So let's talk about C7 or C9 real quick. Funk in C. We've got the C9 right here with the root on the third fret of the A string. Right? We've got the pinky added to it. We got that. We've got... Um, a C7 chord right here, and then we have the new C9 chord that we were just working on with the little that as well. well what I want to talk about is kind of elements of that just C7 bar chord. If you take that C7 bar chord, but look at this. Um, let's just do it like this. Index finger covered over the 8th fret of the G, B, and high E. All right, and so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to hammer on with my middle finger. I'm going to hammer on to the ninth fret of the G like this. Do you see that? So just strum down and hammer, and now that is basically just a C major triad. But I dig that little sound right there. Let me show you all of these little little nuggets of energy funk energy and attitude in this little piece. We've got that, hammer on, well then you could also take your ring finger and, and emphasize the 10th fret of the G and the B string. And then back to the hammer. Just like that. So you could hammer and then strum again. And still go for that staccato sound. Here's a little thing that I always connect with either the full bar chord or with a little piece of it like that. Is this. Um, you have to kind of visualize it. So if the root's right here on the eighth, we would count one up, two up, three up, four up. And ring finger would be right there. So it's the 12th fret for us right now. That's that major third again that I was talking about earlier. What we're gonna do is we can keep track of it that way. So this is gonna be a little C7 triad based off of the D7 chord that we normally play right here. Right there. But what we're going to do is we're going to go like this. Uh, so it's ring finger on the 12th fret of the high E, index finger on the 11th fret of the B, and middle finger on the 12th fret of the G. So that is a C7 triad. But I like sliding into it from a half step below. So, dude, if you're jamming a, a funk groove, like if I played a little bass line. Just like that. You can just... And you can even add your pinky a half step higher to give that suspended fourth. But as long as you're making it staccato like that, you're going to have some nice tasty things going on. But then I really like this, doing that. And then the thing I just taught before with the ring finger covering the tenth of the G and the B. I mean, it's covering the high E too, but I'm just not playing that note. And then that hammer on like that. So check it out. Combining the ideas together. So watch this now. If I said funk 
you know, a lot of times if you're, if you, a good example is like sometimes when I'm jamming, like my friend Papa Stash, my band, I have an instrumental band that I play with sometimes, play a lot of funk music. So we're jamming out funk and my friend Papa Stash showed up sometime and he didn't know any of our songs. Dude, come up, we'll jam, right? So I say, okay, when you do your solo, it's just going to be funk and C, right? Oh, okay. So if I'm comping in C for funk, here's all the different things from this DVD so far that I've showed you. You've got the C9 with the pinky. Right? The other C9 up here. The bar chord C7. The little slide up thing from that C9 right there. This little cluster with the hammer on. And then that little D7 shape. And then the C9 again an octave up. another seven chord like F7 all the same devices let's figure out where that stuff would be for F7 we've got an F7 bar chord barred on the first fret so that would mean there's the root so one two three four starts again on the uh, uh, 13th fret so I can play that, that little D shape thing that new uh, 9 chord that has the root on the E string that we don't play and then that again the F bar chord again right here all that stuff so watch uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna groove between a C7 and an F7 but I'm gonna use all of the devices we've learned in this DVD I don't expect you to get it all but I want you to start recognizing this what I'm doing and I think hopefully I've done a good enough job so far where you'll be able to pick some of the stuff out that I've taught okay so we've got we're gonna do C C C and then we'll go to F F Here I go. And C. C again. F. pieces there cool let me show you a cool thing that's considered like you'd call it a pedal um, it's a it's another really cool thing it was used in Motown music all the time um, and this is really cool it's really easy it's it's you're kind of like a percussionist when you do this as a guitar player and I think of it definitely starting in in the Motown era of music so what you can do is if you have a song like that's kind of like the blues changes or just basically you know, it, it kind of stays in one key. You might have a lot of different chords going on, but it's staying within the same family of chords, a key. So if I took, like, a song that was in the key of G, for instance, right? It could be anything. Any 
anything like that. It's just going through some different stuff, but it kind of starts on a G, right? You can do a pedal idea, which is you just do the same thing over and over, and it's an, a cool octave. So if you took your pinky and put it on a G note, which would be 12, 13, 14, 15th fret, then index finger is going to be on a G, an octave lower, which would be the 12th fret of the G string, respectively. And then we're muting the B string. My index finger is muting it. So all I'm hearing is this 15th fret on the high E and the 12th fret on the G, not hearing anything else. And you can just you can just play that through all the chord changes as a you know as a cool little extra little um, exclamation on top of the song. same rhythmic idea we've been working on in this series so far. So check it out, if I added all my funk elements that we've learned so far, plus that, then we have stuff like this. We've got a G7 bar chord, we've got the G9 chord based off of the root on the E string, with the slide up, then we've got that little D7 triad shape, and then we've got this little kind of triad hammer on idea off of the G7. Then we have the G9 chord with the root on the A string, the pinky added. Then this new thing. that whole another little piece so any key the starting chord basically you can do that octave just dun da 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 you're just picking out out of the one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and you're picking out with with your uh fretted hand which hits to emphasize da 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 just like that and you're breezing through it and it's a beautiful thing okay so so I was using uh, a lot of the same ideas within octaves too and that was really cool so let me just say everything in G7 now, or G funk, just to keep pounding it home. We've got a G7 bar chord. Then if I put my index finger on the second fret of the A string, that's gonna be kind of my locator for that G9 chord that's based off of the third fret on the E string root right here, even though I'm not playing it. And from that, we learned to slide our ring, pinky, and middle finger up a whole step and back. And on the way up, I can get my index finger on the high root, third fret of the high E right there. G7 again. That little D7 triad shape slid up. So my ring finger's on the seventh fret now. And then this. Then we've got the G9 chord on the A string. So middle finger on the 10th fret of the A string. And I play this 9 chord shape. So where I've talked about the land of A7 before, if you've ever heard that, funk is works the same way. Right now I'm teaching, I'm playing the land of G7. And then 
everything I did right here, I could do an octave up because the G on the low E string starts up again on the 15th fret. So then I have the G7 bar chord, index finger on the 14th fret, and I play that G9 chord again. And I have that little D7 triad again up here. And then this stuff. See that? Like I said, I mean, this is all great blues technique, so definitely keep keep in mind that this is really purely, these are all blues devices. I'm just adding a funky pocket to it. And it's the only difference, it's just that feel, okay? So we've been dealing primarily in that seven chord land, the land of seven, or the seven system, the planetary system of the seven chord, dominant seven. We did add the Hendrix chord into the mix, and that was kind of a specialty thing because it's kind of like a seven chord and a minor chord on train on the same train track in opposite directions and then they crash and become the one chord. It's kind of a little bit of, it's a little bit minor, it's a little bit major, both flavors together. Ooh, I made a, a jingle for the Hendrix chord, great. Um, so the next step that you will see in the next module are some minor devices and uh, you know, some funky stuff that would be, you know, a little darker and minor sounding. All right, so that's what we're gonna do in the next module. We'll see you there. I can't wait to show it to you. It's very spicy.